Today's scripture reading, Joshua 23, 6. But now faith, hope, and love abide this, this, but the greatest of this is love. And after praise of God and life choir, Pastor Muntegu will give us a sermon titled, Great Legacy, Faith, Hope, and Love. Amen. I give you, a, let's read a one Bible verse to Joshua 23. Be very firm then to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses so that you may not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left. Today, I would like to share God's grace with a message titled Great Legacy, Faith, Hope, and Love. As you may have guessed from that the title, I prepared this sermon thinking of our senior pastor. When I think about how well I convey the heart of our senior pastor, I feel impressed, but God will pour out His grace that harmonizes with what you feel. We were shocked by the news that our senior pastor went to heaven because we didn't expect it. Nevertheless, we soon came to accept this situation within our faith and still do this today. We believe in God's love that gives us the best things at the right time and His providence that has cultivated humankind in the best way. I thought about the people in the Bible. The Israelites believed that Moses would not enter Canaan with them, yet he died. He died. Also, the son of uh, the sons of prophet who didn't understand the prophet Elijah's accession to heaven searched for him for three days. So I thought about their feelings. The same goes for the, the apostle Paul's death. We are moved by his beautiful martyrdom and learned a lesson from his faith. But back then, believers must have been shocked when they heard his, his death. His ministry was only for the Lord, the churches, and souls. Those who saw his power would find it difficult to understand the situation of Paul being imprisoned. Even though he knew that he would face hardships and be captured, he didn't consider his life precious and was willing to carry out his duties. So, how much did they understand Paul? While Paul spent two years in the Caesarea prison and in prison in Rome, they must have looked forward to meeting him soon. But he was beheaded. So how shocked were they who heard the news? As I thought about many people in events in the Bible, I came to understand that Father God allowed all of this, and it was a process of fulfilling His providence. People of faith believe that God's providence has been carried out exactly according to His will. They believe that God is not a confused God and that His good will is accomp accomplished without single error. They also know that God's thoughts are different from man's thoughts. In Isaiah 55, 9, God Almighty tells us, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It means that humans cannot fully fathom God's marvelous work. So even though everyone is in the same situation, every individual has a different view. Some may think of it as God's good work, others may view it differently based on their fleshly thoughts. The Apostle Paul established the church at Corinth. Before a doctrine was established, 
congregation couldn't discern what was right and wrong, they misjudged each other and was not at peace at one another. Paul told his congregation in his letters and disputes and division. They didn't believe belong to God and said to them about the ability to discern spiritually. He said that spiritual things that come from God could be spiritually discerned. Spiritual things belong to the heart of God. the heart of God, and a spiritual man is a person who lives in the truth. Discernment is the ability ability to see and understand people or a situation clearly and intelligently. With fleshly thoughts, spiritual things cannot be discerned. Only those who reach the level of the spirit can discern what is true or false, or what is right. and wrong to put it to put it another way only people who have a divine level can understand God's good work therefore in 1 Corinthians 13 34 a person whose faith is young are likened to a woman and says woman should keep silent in the churches Here, I give you another example of God's God's thoughts are different from man's thoughts. God created Adam. He said that it was not good for him to be alone, and he made him a helper, suitable for him. Yet, because of this woman, Adam ate ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. As a result, they were driven, driven out of the Garden of Eden. When you look at the sin, it seems like it was wrong, but it was a God's providence. It became a starting point for fulfilling the providence of God's ministry, human cultivation. Since then, all humankind, including Adam, began cultivating the ground on the earth with their free will. As they cultivated their hearts, they started to seek the image of God, which is human cultivation. Let's take a look at more. To save a sinful mankind, God prepared the Savior. The enemy devil had taken over all the authority and power God had given Adam. He knew it and defended himself not to lose his authority. Satan thought if he would kill the Savior, everything would be done. So the enemy devil Satan killed brutally Jesus on the cross. who was the only begotten Son of God, who came to this earth as Savior. But this was God's amazing plan to complete the providence of salvation. It was the moment when Jesus became a peace offering to pay for all of human's kind, king, sins. Adam and his descendants who committed this sin of obedience belonged to the enemy devil. Rome 6.16 Rome 6, says, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for ob- disobedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? Since Adam sinned by obeying the enemy devil, his descendants became a slave to him and led to the way of death. But since the enemy devil Satan killed Jesus, who was without sin, he broke in the spiritual law that was wages of sin is death. So Satan had to set free those who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they they came to become a child of God. It was a secret plan and victory that resulted in a dramatic reverse. This was possible because God's wisdom was higher than the one of the enemy devil Satan. Now that we have come to know the secret of the message of the cross, we can say, Ah, I see, and are very grateful for the grace of salvation. After seeing a pastor went to heaven, I reflect on the feelings of the people around Jesus at the time. There were the Virgin Mary, Mary Magdalene, the disciples, and those who received grace from Jesus. How did they feel? The wicked tried to find a reason to accuse Jesus, and he died on the cross without sin. I think that they were probably so shocked that passed out, and some loved because they didn't understand it with their thoughts. The disciples were startled and fled away. 
they went back to their jobs saying it's over. Anticipating this, Jesus prophesied it during his ministry. He prophesied that he would be crucified and people would abandon. He also told his disciples that he would rise again on the third day and that it would be good for him to go away. But the disciples and people around Jesus didn't understand that what he said was related to their situation. The resurrected Lord met them again and interpreted what he said as his disciples received the promise. Holy Spirit, their spiritual eyes were opened and they were filled with joy and gratitude. That grace they had received become a stepping stone for them to be martyred. I think God's providence is truly mysterious. Our God, who never lost losses, allowed this. So, I realize once again, it was a process of fulfilling His providence. During the funeral of our senior pastor, as I thought about our senior pastor loved us, I meditated on it in terms of legacy. The last will that the Lord left for us is the last seven words on the cross. Rather than a will, it was more like the seven words like the Lord said on the cross. Yet I thought them differently. I realized that all the words Jesus said during the three years of His ministry were like His will. He smiled at his followers and held their hands warmly, touching their hearts with kind words and smile. I thought that all his deeds toward them became a legacy for us. For, for us. I thought this would be a great help to the disciples' ministry. This grace has been captured in the four Gospels, which becomes an asset for believers as God's legacy and reveals as fruit. Then what is the legacy that our new pastor left, left for us? Oh, the grace and love I received from m a m i n and the senior pastor were the faith, hope, and love that made us love God, the tri- Trinity. It was a um, great legacy. First, let's think about it in terms of faith. God saw our new pastors in a heart and met him by healing all of the disease. God called him to be a servant of the Lord and gave him vision, arise, and shine to first start our church. When he began his ministry, he gave us a sermon title, The Greatest of All Treasures is Faith. And back then, he let us know what faith was. It was a fleshly faith and a spiritual faith. Fleshly faith is faith that must be consistent with our thoughts. He told us that spiritual faith is faith that creates something out of nothing. Even though we don't see what we pray, Even if God's word doesn't sit well with our thoughts and knowledge, we can believe it. So we realize that only when we have a spiritual faith can we believe in heaven and hell as God's children and live according to God's will. We also knew that only when we walked in the light, our faith could grow. And yet if we still sin and said, Lord, I believe it was a lie, and our faith had nothing to do with God, We learned that the reason why Christians were unable to receive answers and blessings, even though they say they said they believe in God, was because they had a dead faith. Our senior pastor taught us to pray with God's words about faith and to march in faith. The representative of Bible verses our senior pastor told us are as follows. Mark 9.23 tells us, And Jesus said to them, If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. In Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Mark 11.24 says, Therefore I said to you, All things for which 
you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, they will be granted to you. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16 through 18, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He told us that since faith was the assurance of the things hoped for, if we believe it and act on it with faith, everything will be possible. His profound words and extraordinary, extraordinary power helped us to have spiritual faith. He also introduced us to the faith of forefathers in the Bible from various angles, encouraging us to follow the example. And we came to learn that God wanted everyone to have faith without discrimination, but that is not for everyone. 1 Peter 1.9 says, Obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of souls, it means that we are saved through faith. Let's take a moment to look at Christian sociologists say here, unlike other religions, Christianity has a view of salvation. To put it simply, it's a religion doctrine that salvation cannot be accept, obtained on, on one's own. It's God's full grace and gift. It's not achieved by believing God, accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior and the Holy Spirit. If we had been justified by faith, we must live a life of faith that leads to God's holiness. That is, we must bear fruit that glorifies God. This entire process is accomplished by the grace of God the Trinity. If you walk away from this grace, you cannot be saved. And if you teach a doctrine different, different from this, cannot Christianity, it is also commonly called heresy. So what about us? Our view of our salvation has been precisely established. And I believe that there is additional God's grace that pours out upon our church. So let me explain it briefly. We have the words of life, including the gospel of holiness. We've sought the image of God and longed for holiness. And we also have of God's power to prove that all of this belongs to God. Since we have hope for New Jerusalem, God has brought us His grace to have spiritual faith and to nurture our faith. That's the additional grace from God. I'm also a pastor, but I realize that just because I want to deliver the words of holiness, it doesn't mean that I can preach it every time. Only when a pastor and congregation have a desire to cast away every form of evil from their hearts is it possible. When a minister preaches a message on sin, righteousness, and judgment, and congregation longs for transforming themselves, God can pour out His grace. Furthermore, God's power is not something that just anyone can perform. It is given to those who, have, who are worthy vessels before God. As I read the Bible, I realized that not everyone liked when God's power was manifested. There was King Ahab and Jezebel who hated Elijah's power. There were also Benedict, the king of Aram, who knew that Eli Elijah had a power and gathered all army to kill him. The Jews, who were jealous of the Apostle Paul and people living in the Jesus time, also did. The purpose of God's word and His power is to save souls. Our senior pastor said, the gospel of holiness and the power are gifts from God, leading us to become His true children. As the number of saved people and the sacrificed children of God increases, God is glorified. Second, the legacy that the senior pastor gave us is hope. For Christians, the ultimate goal of faith is heaven. 
As our senior pastor gave a sermon on heaven, he explained in detail its dwelling places and how we li- how would we live there. He told us there is a par- paradise where one of the two criminals hanged on the cross with the Lord was saved right before his death. and New Jerusalem where the forefathers of faith, such as Abraham, Moses, and Paul, who reached the highest level of faith, enter. As we listen to his words, we are filled with the hope for New Jerusalem. He gave us all the details of how we could enter New Jerusalem. He knew very well the heart of God, who cultivates humankind, so He led all of us with earnest prayer and love so that we could become God's true children who could go to New Jerusalem. Since New Jerusalem is a place where you can reach when you are not only saved but also sanctified, He helped us to fill with the Holy Spirit and brought us joy and happiness to cast out our sins. He knew that heavenly dwelling places and rewards would be determined according to our faith, so He wanted us to mature our faith like the level of our level of Father. Yeah, I felt kindness in His words. Also, He published a book of heaven so that we could check our faith. I believe that the best food of human cultivation in h o p e for New Jerusalem as a truly valuable legacy. Third is love. The words of the 66 books of the Bible are the heart of God. If you sum it it up in 10 things, it's the 10 commandments. If you summarize it up in two words, it's God's love. And if you express it in a word, it's love. 1 John 1 verse 16, God is love. When you know and share the meaning of love, it becomes beautiful, happy, and worthy. God wanted His people to recognize and share His love that comes from His heart. So, He has been carrying out a project called Human Cultivation. To help us understand His love, God recorded it as various forms in the Bible. I realized that the core of His love is to save people. So, the heart of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our senior pastor didn't hesitate to say t sacrifice and devote himself so that we could understand his love. As he spent countless days of fasting and prayer, he interpreted some difficult Bible passages and revealed us as the spiritual world without hesitation. Even though the Christian Church Association might have misunderstood it, understood it, he was willing to tell us it and act it with a faith that pleased God more than man. And without the signs and wonders he performed, he manifested that his miracles, sign, power came from God. As pastors and believers at home and abroad listened to his message and saw his power, their thoughts were broken and their hearts were open so that they came to participate in evangelizing Korea and global ministry because they experienced God's works recorded in the Bible in person. I said God's love was to save people. God has met those who long for him in any era. Even if they were evil, God didn't delight in destroying them. He wanted them to be saved. When they turned their hearts toward God, He showed them His love. God God always told His children through prophets to prevent them from being deceived by the enemy devil Satan and help them not to stray from His law. at times express his love with a gentleness or a weep. The senior pastor's ministry I saw was the work of God's love to save souls. He was always humble. He wants us to prosper in all areas of our lives and be in good health. 
If the Lord's servants or congregation wanted to live a life that glorifies God, He prayed for them and encouraged them. Without our senior pastor's teachings, how could we know God who has been from the beginning? How could, how, could we know, how could we know about the grand project called human cultivation, which is like a secret and the reality of a New Jerusalem? When you know this secret, our life is changed. We didn't live a life of wanderer, but live a life of seeking the heart of God. Even if we experienced trials or difficulties, we knew they were s u r e c u t to having our desire fulfilled, only looking at the glory of our Father God. When you realize the love of God, we can cast out our sins from our hearts. So God brought us the joy to, rec- to get rid of our hearts from our hearts. Following that grace, we loved and respected our senior pastor. We also served him like the Lord. The Apostle Paul, famous as matchmaker with the gospel, says in Ephesians 6, 5-8, Slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, not by way of our eye service as men pleasures, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Whatever goodness each person does, he or she r e c e i v e from the Lord. Corinthians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, do you work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. This is how we felt when serving our senior pastor. The Apostle Paul tells us in 16.4, Who for my life, who for my life risk their own necks to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. It means that some believers even risk their lives for Paul. As we read this verse, we don't think, why did they give up their lives for Paul, not for the Lord? Rather, it teaches a lesson as a good example between pastors and congregation. The congregation mentioned here is the couple Priscilla and Aquila. They accompanied Paul on his missionary journey and were a great help for him to set up the early church in his ministry. John 15.13 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. It is a truly beautiful relationship. While thinking about this, I realized something. When Paul preached the same gospel, some mature to the point of sacrificing their lives. While others hated him out of jealousy and tried to kill him. Yet, Paul embraced all types of people and prayed for them. As Rom 9.3 says, For I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ for the sake of my brother, my kinsman according to the flesh. He loved s a u l so much. He waited for them to repent of their sins and be saved. He believed that if their faith matured, they would become like the couple, f u r i s i l l a and Aquila, So we shouldn't turn our face away from those who ask us out of spiritual secure, curiosity. Instead of us critic, criticizing them for having a different opinion because they were inadequate or their faith is young, when they ask us, we use it as an opportunity for nurturing them. Jesus knew it very well and what is born. Jesus knew it very well. 
Jesus very well that what is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Yet He didn't turn His face from those who were curious or wanted to know more. He explained to them in parables so that they could understand well. Even as a result, Nicodemus became the one who defended him, Jesus, before the Pharisees. He even brought a mixture of m a l and a l o s to bury Jesus. Although it was not easy for him to, as a Pharisee and ruler of the Jews, he didn't forget the grace he had received from the Lord and acted with a sincere faith. When I have a conversation with people from other denominations, I try to talk to them with even more care. I don't have any difficulty in talking with our church members. Even if my expression sounds awkward, they understand well what I say. But believers from other denominations may misunderstood, misunderstand us and have incorrect information or may misjudge it by seeing only part of our church. We need to talk with them based on the level of their faith and to tell them coherently so that they don't misunderstand us. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, For who among men knows the thought of man except the spirit of the man which is in him, even so the thought of God no one knows except the spirit of God. So we shouldn't blame those who are misjudging us. In the ninth sermon on love chapter, our senior, senior pastor said that even if a person speaks the same language, it is difficult to understand each other's hearts and thoughts. It's never easy. Because of the words we speak, we may misjudge each other and mi- make mistakes. But in heaven, we don't need to worry about it. Since there is no evil in heaven, we can convey our good hearts to each other. So there are no misunderstandings or prejudices there. Because we speak good and beautiful words in heaven, we can say a word of thoughtfulness and love so that we can touch the heart of the other person. In this world, there is a limit to knowing the heart of the other person. When we, don't, when, when we don't talk about our own good, but also to listen and acknowledge it, what the other person says, if it is the truth, it is the wisdom, because the other person could have hate you out of jealousy. If if, uh, each one of you embrace people without faith, you will help our church carry out national evangelism and global ministry. The Lord's love was the fulfillment of the law, law, which was the works of saving souls. Our senior pastor also did the same. He guided us to achieve the greatest good and loving hearts. I think that is a great legacy he left for us. Let me conclude the message, dear congregation. As I thought about the legacy of the senior pastor, I reflect on the forefathers of faith who went to heaven first. Among them, the prophet Elijah popped deep into my mind. To the Israelites who worship idols, Elijah did his best to show them that God was the only true God. When he went to heaven, he knew that the Lord would fulfill his mission as a Savior. Since he experienced it, it was not easy to carry out his ministry as the servant of God. He desperately wanted to help the Lord. So, John the Baptist was born with the heart of Elijah and prepared the way for the Lord. I also thought about the intercession of the Lord who has fulfilled his mission as a Savior. Then, how did our senior pastor feel? He would, he would have been difficult to express his emotion when he met the Lord. 
whom he had longed to see so much, because he saw the Lord in person, not just vaguely, as if he were looking in a mirror. As he was with Ma Min, he marched with faith, hope, and love. He was willing to help those in need when he saw their situation. To fill a global ministry and bear the fruit of a new Jerusalem, he prepared everything for us. Yet I think of him who intercedes for us in heaven. If you believe that he will always support and intercede for us to carry out the ministry, I thought that we could greatly accomplish it. Our servants of the Lord and congregation have armed themselves with God's word. I think they are truly precious. I was grateful to see a family from our church who may be more overwhelmed with shock and grief than anyone else understand the situation with joy and gratitude. With the heart of the senior pastor, our acting senior pastor will succeed the ministry of Ma Min, so I am so thankful for that. I'm a pastor ministering at church. Of course, there are quite a difference from when I did my ministry as an assistant pastor, so I always feel that our workers and congregation working in the truth are so precious, and they gave me a lot of help. Just as the God of Abraham, the God of Ajak, and the God of Jacob are together, the God of our shepherd, our senior pastor j e o l i will be with us. Thanks to the grace given through the channels of the forefathers' faith, the Israelites achieved victory. Likewise, God's grace given us through the channel of our senior pastor will be a great asset of faith. for each one of us. I hope that today's message will help you to mine the treasures of your heritage in faith, hope, and love. So I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and life that will enter New Jerusalem as the fruit of heaven. that God the Father desires. Let's think of the message and pray together.